Okay, this is um, Newberry Printers, and this is about two things, about add, sort of about adding or dropping a product line, but also about a constrained resource. Okay, so you got sort of two categories here. And this, this company operates a printing press with a capacity of 3,200 machine hours, and they have two main customers. So these are their customers. The Wallace Corporation, they're making about 35000 from uh, this company. And Kimberly, they're making, they've got a $2,000 loss from Kimberly. And the other thing to, to notice here, as soon as you see this, is take a look at the, um, at the fixed cost. Now here they say fixed costs that are allocated. Now, if you remember from back in the textbook, allocated costs are costs that do not go away. They come from like company headquarters. They're not direct fixed costs, they're allocated fixed costs. So if we get rid of Kimberly Corporation saying just went with Wallace, this fifty thousand would move right over here. And they would have a hundred and twenty five thousand of fixed costs um to go forward. So Kimberly indicates that it wants Newberry to do an additional $160,000 worth of printing jobs during February. Okay, so and this is dated just for one month. Okay, so another 160. So in other words, they're going to double this. They're making 160 now. They want to do twice as much next month. These jobs are identical to the existing business Newberry did for Kimberly in terms of variable costs and machine hours required. Okay, so our variable costs are 112,000 and the machine hours required are 800. So now your revenue would double, your variable costs would double, your contribution margin would double, and the machine hours required would also double. Okay, uh, the fixed costs, the allocated fixed costs would stay the same. Newberry anticipates that business from the Wallace Corporation in February will be the same as that in January, so there will not be increased demand here. On, or decreased, okay? Newberry can choose to accept as much of the Wallace and Kimberly business for February as it has the capacity allows. So they cannot add capacity in order to do this job. So they've got a total of 3,200, um, a monthly capacity of 3,200 machine hours, and right now it's allocated between Wallace and Kimberly. Okay, so assume that the machine hours and fixed costs will be the same as in January. So what should they do? So um, this would be, let's go through this here, this would be the um, income without Kim. Like typically when I'll do these problems, what I do is I do um, another separate column that shows me all the numbers without that piece of the business. Okay, so my income would be 240 from Wallace. My contribution margin would be 110400 the fixed costs, allocated fixed costs would still be 125. So now we would have an overall loss of 14,600. Okay, see those allocated fixed costs are big. That's a, it's a, it's a big, good sized number and you can't do anything about it. So what we do first is we figure out the contribution margin per unit of the constraint. I've got a contribution margin here of 110.4 divided by um, the constraint is 2,400 machine hours. So here, this is $46 per machine hour. That's the contribution margin we're getting. And from Kimberly, we've got 48,000 of a contribution margin divided by 800 machine hours or $60 per machine hour. Okay, so for, per the constrained resource, it looks like Kimberly would be the one that would make the most money for us. Okay, so we get that we would maximize Kimberly to maximize our income and then take the rest of their hours and, and uh, move them over to um, to Wallace. Okay, so then, so if Kimberly has, what do we have here? There are 3,200 total machine hours, so um, 1,600 then would go to Kimberly. Okay, it's 800 now, we're going to double it, so 1,600 at uh, $60 per machine hour. We've got a contribution margin then of of $96,000 here. And then for Wallace, they've got 1,600 left. We would make 73.6 for Wallace. So our total contribution margin is 169.6. Less the fixed cost, we've got um, operating income of 44,600. So in terms of the numbers, this looks like it's a good way to do it, okay? We're making 33.4 now. If we accepted this other offer to double this business, so they must have a lot of, of um, um, demand out there, okay, that isn't showing up. So we would have um, we would have operating income of forty four six. Okay.
All right. Other factors, though, is how about all your customers for Wallace? What if they decide, well, forget it. What do you mean? You're, you mean you're not going to supply me this month? You know, how often would you let that happen to you as a customer? They, you know, they might lose a lot of business here. Okay. And the thing that is with the Kimberly job, it's only for one month. So what happens in the following month? Alrighty.